Again, we're counting on good news coming out of U.S.-China trade talks. Fox Business confirming, Edward Lawrence reporting this, that there was a phone call between the United States and Chinese trade delegations involving Robert Lighthizer, Steve Mnuchin, and Chinese Premier Hu. He basically has been leading the trade negotiations for the Chinese. Another meeting could be set up as early as next week. Joining me now, New Jersey Congressman, House Agriculture Committee member Jeff Randrew. Congressman, great to see you this morning. Do you have any, can you give us any insight into what is going on with these trade negotiations at this point and your expectations? Well, first of all, it's great to see you as well, and it's great to be with you on this July 4th coming up. Um, I might have expectation that we're going to move forward. I think it's both advantageous, obviously, not only to China, but to the United States. Uh, certainly, it affects agriculture in our area. When you look at products like almonds, you look at soybeans and some of the other products that we produce and China buys, uh, we want to keep that relationship. At the same time, we must maintain our strength in these issues. I mean, these are very serious issues we're speaking about with China. The theft of intellectual property, the theft of technology, uh, the money manipulation that goes on. Uh, make no mistake about it. China wants to be number one. China plays hard. Um, while we have to do everything we can to make this work, we're also going to have to play hard as well. Uh, I'm hopeful that this is going to work out. This is the only way to really work it out because certainly we are don't want to leave it as it is and just do nothing. And at the same time, obviously, we don't want to be involved in any kind of military action. So the real approach here is negotiation, negotiation, negotiation until we have a mutual advantage for both of us. Crisis at the border. I want to move on to this um, the situation that was laid out in this inspector general's report from the Department of Homeland Security. One official in the report calling the situation at border detainment facilities a ticking time bomb. This is the new DHS watchdog report. An inspector general warning about dangerous overcrowding in border patrol facilities in the Rio Grande Valley of South Texas. This on the heels of a federal judge in Seattle blocking the Trump administration from detaining asylum seekers while they pursued their cases. Constant, did you vote for this aid? Did you vote in favor of this aid package that was passed last week, that $4.6 billion? Um, most of a, a majority of it going to basically help unaccompanied alien children in the Health and Human Services program? I did. And let me be very clear. Um, was part of a group of individuals that said, we can't keep going along this way. I mean, we need to do much, much, much more, but we at least need to get that aid there. And I put out a statement that I was not going to go home for July 4th. I wasn't going to go home, period, until we had at least this aid situation straightened out. So, as you know, in the Senate, um, bipartisan action was taken, including, uh, you know, uh, majority leader, minority leader Schumer, that they would move forward with a package that went through 80-some to 8. So it was Republicans and Democrats finally, thank God, working together. But in the House, we were still working on the same bill that wasn't going to go through and wasn't going to achieve the finish line. That was unacceptable. It was unacceptable to go home and not have at least this little piece of it straightened out. So the bill that was in the House was pulled, the Senate bill was put in, and the majority of Republicans by far and the majority of Democrats did vote for it. Not everyone, but there was no way we could let this continue, and I believe it was the right thing to do. Now, there's much, much more to do. We, we have to, in fact, I'm going to be going over to the border in about 10 days at multiple spots and visiting it. Uh, but we have to make it safer. We have to make it better. And as I've said before, there is an answer to this. There is a bipartisan answer if we would all show leadership and deal with the, you know, those that are undocumented here in the United States and make a deal and tie it all together with what's going on at the border, have more security, including physical barrier, but also allow the folks that are here now to work their way through, and not just amnesty, but to work their way through and become United States citizens the way our parents and grandparents did, so that we would have safe borders, we would have people that would be legal here, that would be paying taxes here, and finally we would have an immigration system that hopefully would work. Uh, we need better work visas, and this all can be done.
Congressman, great to see you. And good to point out the Democrats who voted for this aid package, the many of you. Congressman Jeff Andrew, take care and ha have a great Independence Day. You too. It's a great time to celebrate. And this is a great country, and I thank you. Yes, indeed.